Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Mr. Tie-Dye and today we're going to do a paw print tie-dye. I've had a few requests for it so I made myself a stencil out of my plastic cutting board stuff and I'm going to draw this on just the front of the tee. So what we're starting with is a tee that's been soaked in soda ash, it's been spun out and then I tucked one sleeve in the other for my method of folding in half. I'll put a link to that video down in the description, but that allows me to pull then just the front of the t-shirt forward. And then what I can do is lay my stencil right on the t-shirt. I usually line it up so that it's four or five fingers down from the, the collar of the t here. That puts the design right on the center of the chest. And then I use my washable marker and we're going to draw inside the stencil here. The stencil just makes it easier if you're going to do a design more than one time. The stencil just allows you to do the work of the design once and then the other times you can just quickly lay this on there and have the same design come up. Then all you have to do is fold it. So there's my paw print. The other thing, if uh, you want to put claws on here, you can add those on, either on your stencil or just by hand. You can draw a couple claws on. Uh, I usually do just the plain paw unless it's requested. I did a, a bear paw once and I put nice big long claws on there. Anyway, so what I usually do is I'll start by folding the, the base of the paw first. So that one I'm just going to do little accordion folds. So let's turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. So I just accordion fold that and I just try to line my lines up on top here nice and straight. And I'm doing maybe half inch quarter, uh, half inch accordion folds. And it's just a matter of lining those up. Sometimes it's easy on a small design like this here to just reach under and press your line up and basically I just want to try to line these up so if I line that up and then as I go around the corner you can just kind of make some adjustments so that line stays there on top nice and straight so I just keep folding that up and down but this here is the part where the design comes together is by following that line there for your folding. Okay, and at this point I'm going to tie it with kite string but you could also wrap sinew around there. If you like a white line around your paw, you can wrap sinew around that and pull that really tight. But we're just gonna go with kite string. So I wrap that around a couple times and just take a little bit of the tension out. I will give that a little bit of a tug, tie that off. I do have a video on how I work with kite string and sinew and I'll put a link to that down in the description also. That's the base of the paw and now we'll get the toes tied up. So the way I do the toes is I kind of smooth things out, open that up so it's, it's nice and flat and then I kind of judge this here is fairly symmetrical toe here so I just kind of pick that up in the middle to fold that in half and you can kind of check hold that up to the light or whatever see that you have that lined up and then you can make adjustments as needed but then you have just a half of a circle to fold so you're going to do that the same way you did the base here and this is another reason that I'm doing this just on the front because at this point there's four layers of fabric in the t-shirt the here um, so if I had it did the front and the back then there would be eight layers so that would just be a little bit thicker that would probably be a time if I was going to do front and back I would probably use sinew 
to tie this up and then let it dry out completely before I dyed it. And that would help you saturate all of the layers then from the front and the back of the t-shirt. But since we're going to dry this or dye this while it's damp, we're going to do just the front of the tee. And we'll still get good saturation in these toes here. So I'm going to do the same thing. Just wrap this kite string around a couple times and I tighten it up just to pull some of that tension out. And that also just kind of locks that in a little bit. And then the last toe, I'm going to do the same thing. So you just have to kind of smooth things out a little bit the best that you can and then pick up that toe underneath top and bottom so that you can line it up and actually this might be easier if you folded the two toes first and then did the base I kinda did that a little bit backwards because that way you won't have this tension while you're trying to fold that second toe in there but I just make sure that my toe is lined up front on, on each side here so I'm just holding this up to the light to see that line through there and then I'm going to do the same little accordion fold on there Okay, sorry about that. My camera turned off on me. So, what we're going to do is get this scrunched up. Usually, what I like to do when I have the sleeves tucked inside one another, I just kind of scrunch them up in their own little armhole there. And if you give it a little bit of a twist, it'll take you in more of that excess slack out of there. But you could also do other things. If you wanted to tie another design on the back, you could tie a heart. Uh, you could do the uh, spine on there. I do have a video for the spine. In fact, maybe I'll do a, a spine on the back of this one just because. So for the spine, basically I'm going to do just an accordion fold all the way up the T. And I do have a video on how to do the spine on my channel here. I'll put a link to that in the description. But this is just a, a quick one here. That you can add a little bit of extra detail to the back of the shirt. These are the toes there on the paw print. So I usually try to run the kite string in between those toes a little bit just to try to scrunch them up but also keep them just a little bit separated so that when I put dye on it doesn't want to flop back on itself there. But I try to make sure that the toes are sticking up and they're, that they're separated. So you just kind of wrap around however you need to to get those toes to stand just where you want them at. And then to get the fabric scrunched up around them. So I'm just kind of wrapping around here because that center, that toe close to the edge, there was still a little bit of a space. So I'm just trying to make sure that I have that gathered up so that it takes some dye differently. Anyway. Once you get it all wrapped up, we'll tie it off. We're going to use the thick black dye to dye that with. And then I think we'll put some turquoise and then sapphire blue over top of that. So I'm going to start out dyeing the paw print here. So let's zoom in just a little bit. So I'm using thick black dye here just so it doesn't run. 
but you can use regular dye. In fact, just because I think I will use regular dye to show you that it can be done that way. If I can find my black. Okay, hold on just a second. To fill these little bottles, I am putting a video together showing different tips and tricks and the tools and stuff that I use. But the dye bottle has been one of the things, these ones with the little metal tips on them that I found on Amazon. I'll put a link to this in the bottom. But they do have a really narrow hole on there. So you have to find a little tiny funnel. But the other way that you can do it is if you wipe off the top of your bottle that you use, the bigger dye bottle, so that you don't have soda ash on there. Then you squeeze the air out of the small bottle and then you poke that in and just kind of seat it. You want to make a seal an airtight seal and then you just squeeze this top bottle and it fills that bottom one up. Once this side pop out on there then I squeeze it one more time and you keep that air seal so when I squeezed it that pushed air up into this bottle and I squeeze this one again and once it pops out it'll be most of the way full and ready for use. And the main thing is that when you pull these apart, make sure that you carefully tip that so that it doesn't want to squirt dye out on you. But that's how I fill these little bottles here. I've been using them for a few months now and I haven't had any leaks with these. So that's been really nice. So this here is just my regular dye. It's not my thickened dye. So what I'm going to do is apply this slowly to my paw print and I'm going to start away from the line so let's zoom in even closer here so I'm going to start away from the line and that way it lets the dye spread on its own there and with this here you can see that I'm putting just a little bit at a time when I tip this over the dye doesn't come out I mean I can kind of shake it make it come out but really you just squeeze just a little bit and that dye will come out. So you're putting it on very slowly which helps with the control issues here. So I'll get dyed all the way around the paw and you can watch it just slowly creep up there. I'll flip it over. I'm going to dye the other side also. Once again putting that up maybe within a quarter inch or so of the line but not all the way and that way that allows the dye to just kind of move a little bit on its own okay now the other two paw prints here you have to I usually will kind of hold my design let's see if I can get in the camera frame here so I do the same thing on these. I will put the dye on just a little bit away from that line so that it doesn't immediately spread outside the line. And just let it creep along there. And these I usually will try to do them one at a time. Just because if you start applying it to all of the toes at once it might spread faster than what you like. And then when you need to slow that spread down a little bit you can take a dry rag and just sandwich that toe in between and give a little bit of a squeeze and that'll take out some of that excess dye and move some of it closer to the line and this big one looks like it's about ready too so I'm going to squeeze some of that excess out so I just use a different clean spot on the rag sandwich that in there and give that a squeeze because if you have too much dye moving around, when you're batching this, it can spread then up into the rest of the t-shirt. And then I'll go along and just kind of touch up those edges a little bit. On both of these, and then I'll get to that last toe. Then I'll usually go ahead and apply just a, another little bit of a light coat. If I see a lot of the white cotton fibers 
sticking up that usually indicates that there's room for more dye down inside the tea so I'm just lightly adding a bit of dye there and now we're going to get that last toe I'm trying to make sure everything else is poked down around it and apply that dye leave about a quarter inch space So this is my regular dye, this is not the thickened dye. Although my regular dyes have just a tiny, tiny bit of thickener in there, but not enough to really stop it. I still have to apply the dye slowly to keep control of it. So it's just a process. And the more you practice with it, the better your results are going to turn out. And part of it is really just getting the dye application down, putting the dye on slowly, and watching how much is on there so that it's not spreading around. Because sometimes all of the spreading will happen to us while the t-shirt is batching. So now once I have the toes done, now I'm going to go around each of the toes with a lighter color. I'm choosing turquoise as the base color of my t-shirt. So I'm putting that right around the base of the toes. That's just going to help even more keep that black dye from spreading because really what it is is liquid just trying to move to a drier location. So I get the toes dyed and then I try to get the turquoise put around the toes because I can see already some of this black dye is, is spreading and it's just because this part of the t-shirt is drier than that part of the t-shirt. So when I put some turquoise on or any color that's getting this part of the t-shirt wet so this here the wetness on both sides of this line is now about equal so they're most, more likely is going to stay where I put them now. Hope that made sense. So now I'm going to color the rest of the t-shirt with turquoise and then I'm going to do my tire track in some other colors here, my spine of the back. And then the last color will go with turquoise just to keep with the theme of the t-shirt here. And this is all, I'm just kind of making this up on the fly. Sometimes I just in the moment decide what colors I'm using or what design I'm tying up like on the back of the t-shirt or something. Okay, now I'm going to coat the rest of this t-shirt here in a darker blue. And I made just a little bit of a ring around there so that the paw print is going to be just surrounded by the turquoise. To use a rag here just to kind of make sure that when I lay this down that these toes don't fold over and touch on the t-shirt here so that way they're going to be kind of resting so I can poke that in that rag in between the toes there and that way that they're not going the black isn't going to get on the rest of the t-shirt I hope that made sense okay so now let's I'm moving my color around here so let's zoom back out so this here is how I put my colors on for my back I did my green fuchsia purple turquoise and now what I'm gonna do is move one over slide these over and now I'm going to start with my fuchsia up here where the green was on the other side that's what's going to give the 
DNA effect or the the spine look there is by having the colors shifted over just one space. And I find the easiest way to do that is just move a bottle. It doesn't matter which direction, but since I have turquoise here on the end and I have turquoise over here, that's why I decided I didn't want to move it the turquoise that way and confuse the pattern. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to leave just a little bit of an outline around those paws. So this part of the t-shirt I'm leaving all of that turquoise around the paw mark. And that's just a personal choice. You can color right up there but that's going to just center highlight that paw in the middle with the darker colors or the lighter colors around it. And there's the rest of the design. Up right there. So there is the paw print. And now what I'm going to do is let this batch for 48 hours. I'll rinse it and finish this video up. Thank you for watching. Please like and share my videos.